Before you go dropping money on any 9mm bolt, there is way more to know than what you might think. To help you understand the differences, we're going to go over what 9mm direct blowback bolts are, how they differ from standard AR-15 bolt carriers, the reasons behind those differences, and we're going to wrap it up by going over some bolt options to pick out the best one for our PCC build as we continue in our ultimate AR-9 builder's guide. Hey everyone, it's CJ with AT3 Tactical here, and if you're new to the AR squad, then you'll hear the term BCG or bolt carrier group thrown around a lot with AR platforms. If you look at a typical AR-15 or even an AR-10, the BCG will be made up of two main pieces, the bolt carrier and the actual bolt. With 9mm, the most common system is what's called direct blowback, which will forego the rotating locking lugs system like your typical AR-15 uses. So actually, the 9mm direct blowback system bolt is going to be one piece integrated with the bolt and the actual carrier itself. If you really want to dive deep into the world of AR-15 bolts, then we have a great video for you right here. So what even is direct blowback anyway? Well, to help illustrate direct blowback, imagine squeezing the trigger and the round going off. The pressure pushes the bullet out of the barrel, but the pressure from the bullet going off also pushes back on the bolt. In a 9mm direct blowback system, that's all it takes to cycle the gun. No extra fancy parts for a gas system needed. Since the 9mm bolts don't have locking lugs that keep the bolt in place, the bolt needs to be heavy enough, and this recoil spring needs to be strong enough to slow things down just enough for the bullet to exit the barrel, pressures to drop to a safe level, extract the spent casing, eject it out, and then strip a new round out of the magazine, pushing it into the barrel's chamber. This key difference is crucial to understand when discussing 9mm bolts, as it influences all the other variations we'll encounter as we move on. With the differences of direct blowback in mind, let's quickly go through some of the biggest reasons 9mm bolts are different from AR-15 bolts. Starting out with the biggest difference, there are normally going to be three kinds of bolts, depending on the magazines you go with. Colt, Glock, or hybrid bolts, also known as universal bolts. Be careful, because some Glock-only bolts can be a little bit finicky depending on the type of system that you have. In most cases, we suggest hybrid bolts. Hybrid 9mm bolts are going to be compatible with Glock and Colt magazines. One thing to keep in mind with most 9mm bolts is the firing pin will more than likely have a spring to keep it from bouncing around, which could ultimately damage the firing pin or lead to an accidental discharge. The next big difference is the ejector. On an AR-15, it's part of the bolt, but as we discussed in the last episode, in the AR-9 world, the ejector is usually a little claw that is built into the lower receiver. To accommodate this claw, the bolt has wider grooves on the bottom that are built into it, so the ejector can slide right through the bolt and get rid of the spent casing, much like your typical handgun. Depending on the manufacturer, there may or may not be ridges milled into the bolt for a forward assist. If you don't know what a forward assist is, that's okay. It's basically a little plunger that assists the bolt forward into battery. Most of the time though, most 9mm bolts aren't going to have those ridges. In the old days, the bottom side of the 9mm bolt was a straight design at the bottom, which meant if you used a mil-spec trigger, it would lead to more trigger slap, which basically means you could feel the hammer getting reset by the bolt when depressing the trigger. To mitigate this feeling, Colt used a specific 9mm trigger that had a smaller hammer so shooters would not feel this trigger slap. A lot of people sent their bolts to gunsmiths to have ramps cut into them so that they could use their favorite AR-15 style triggers. Colt later cut bolts with ramps built into them as a stock feature, and today we can use standard mil-spec style hammers instead of funky 9mm hammers or triggers. You might still want to look carefully at reviews though to make sure that you're getting something called a ramped bolt so you can use pretty much whatever trigger that you want. If you pick up a 9mm bolt, you'll notice how much heavier it is compared to a standard AR-15 BCG. The reason for this extra weight is usually the 2.2 ounces of extra weight that is built into the back, commonly held in by a pin in the back of the bolt. The extra weight on a 9mm bolt is important because the last thing that you want is for your bolt to start cycling while the bullet is still traveling down the barrel. If the bolt opens too quickly before the bullet leaves the barrel, there's a good chance the high pressure can cause real damage to yourself or 
even worse, your PCC. Some people will even remove the weight to help with tuning, but we'll get into that a little bit later in this series. But be careful if you want to do this, because some of these weights are going to weigh differently and have different roll pins keeping them in place. So keep that in mind, because not all of these weights and pins are going to be standardized. And honestly, that can be said about 9mm bolts in general, because you're going to find all kinds of bolts out there, like some that have a two-piece design, like the Aero Precision EPC9, that have a shortened bolt with a large plug on the back to accommodate and change the weight in and out. These bolts are not compatible with most folding systems, and because of the pinhole, there's a thin area right next to the plug that some people have reported cracking, so I try to stay away from these bolts if I can. There are also bolts out there that have different bolt faces, internal extractors, special coatings for better recoil management, or even some that help enable last round bolt hold open, but honestly, all of these differences are going to be specific to the manufacturer. So when you're picking out your own 9mm bolt, spend some time and do some of your own homework to figure out what bolt is going to work well for you and what features you value. But Let's move on and pick out a bolt for our own 9mm build. Before we do that, I gotta bring up two other options that you may want to look into. There are systems out there that are called roller delay and other systems that use something called radial delay. Both of these options are similar to direct blowback. However, as the name says, they will delay the movement of the bolt after the bullet is fired. By delaying the movement and soaking up the energy, you can actually use lighter bolts than you would normally in a direct blowback system, thereby reducing recoil. So if you're looking to build the ultimate lightweight PCC or reduce recoil even further, you may want to look into these systems. If you want us to do a deep dive into roller or radial delay bolts, let us know in the comments because there's a lot to talk about here, but for now, let's move on to picking out a bolt for our own build. The first bolt we're going to look at is a solid choice for almost any AR9 build. Our AT3 9mm bolt is priced right, backed by our lifetime warranty, of course, and it's compatible with captured buffers like Armaspec and JP buffers, but we're going to talk about those in later episodes. It's coated with black nitride, which means the bolt is durable, easy to clean, and the ramp design allows you to use almost any trigger that you want, like we talked about earlier. And since it's a hybrid bolt, you can use either Glock or other types of magazines, as long as you have the proper lower and upper receiver. It's a basic bolt, and it gets the job done reliably, at a good price, and can't really ask for much else than that. For those seeking enhanced reliability in their AR9 build, the Faxon Firearms Black Nitrite 9mm bolt is a good choice. Faxon has made some big improvements to key components like the extractor, carrier key, and firing pin, all in their second generation bolt. I did some of my own digging and found a ton of positive user reviews. It's clear to me that this bolt delivers consistent and reliable performance. So, if you're looking for a little bit of an upgrade over the AT3 bolt, then you may want to check this one out. All of that is to say, maybe don't buy into the hype of any company telling you this will make your gun run perfectly. At the end of the day, companies may claim to have some fancy tricks and design enhancements, but a lot of these bolts work basically the same way. So do some of your own homework and pick one out that works for you and of course, your wallet. The bolt that I'm gonna go with though is, no surprises, our AT3 9mm bolt. It's going to be just fine in the Angstat upper and lower receiver that we picked out earlier, and we've had no complaints about reliability when it comes to this guy. We also have a lifetime warranty that I look for in almost all the products that I try to go with, just for that little extra peace of mind. Now that we have our bolt all picked out, it's time to pick out arguably the most important part of any gun, the barrel. Except, how do different barrel lengths affect bullet velocity? Well, I wanted to find out. So we're going to go out to the range and test five barrels to get to the bottom of which one is gonna give us the best possible performance in next week's video right here. So if you want to see what barrel we're going to end up with after all those tests, we'll see you over there. 